Every year, radio station WHO at Des Moines picks out the worst rundown farm we can find in the state of Iowa. We go in there with a multiple series of tractors and gang plows and rehabilitate the farm to the extent of about $100,000 in one day. A few years ago, we invited Thomas Dewey to come out and address that gathering, for the multitudes came from 13 states. We had 130,000 people there. We parked uh, 30,000 cars and 150 planes. Thomas Dewey said, Iowa is Republican, it always has been Republican, and why should we waste any good Republican money in a good Republican state? So he turned us down. We invited Harry Truman to come, me and Harry. <laughs> Harry accepted. The result was that we had this big crowd. We were eating lunch in the tent, and it was hot as it can be hot in Iowa. And out of respect for the President of the United States, everybody was wearing a coat. And I said to Mr. Truman, who sat right opposite to me in this narrow table, I said, Mr. President, any man that wears a coat here has a dirty shirt. That's what I said to Justin. He took his coat off. He took his coat off. <laughs> and that goes for the women, too. You know, the a few years ago, we made a trip down to the Southern Islands, and we saw fit to write a book, which was issued last September by Rand McNally in Chicago, entitled Upside Down and Right Side Up with B.J. Because when you're below the equator, you're upside down. And when you're upside down below the equator, you're right side up. It also wrote up the story, the best story that was ever written on the lost cities of Angkor Thom in old Cambodia. The book is 1,048 pages with 530 pictures. It was issued last September. The book cost us $16,000. It is not yet entirely paid for. Now, I would like everyone who will tomorrow purchase a copy of that book, please stand. <laughs> According to that, I'll get enough money tomorrow to pay the balance of the bill. <laughs> we thank you. In 1895, an incident of worldwide historical human value took place. 
Harvey Leonard became deaf. He was in a stoop, cramped position when he heard something pop in his neck. He was deaf for 18 years. In his neck was a large visible bump. Fortunately, it could be seen. Otherwise, it might have gone unnoticed. D.D. Palmer said, if the production of that bump produced deafness, reduction of that bump should restore hearing. Fortunately, that bump was reduced, and fortunately, hearing was restored. That incident started and established a truth heretofore unknown and unused. I ask you, would the average man, upon a single isolated case, have discovered a universal human principle and practice? Was that man justified in laying down an all-complete, all-inclusive, and all-exclusive universal human principle? Fifty-eight years has justified that conclusion. Chiropractic is based upon the fixed fix, uh, facts of physics that matter cannot move without force or energy. That human matter is in motion as human energy gets to that matter. That human matter moves in speed in exact ratio as the quantity of human energy predetermines as delivered to that human matter. More mind in more matter equals more motion. Now matter moves as it's moved upon by energy. Moving composite beings are alive. Inanimate composite beings are dead. To move is to live. Motion is life. To not move is to be dead, and no motion is death. A necessity for motion, and to be unable to control motion, is dis-ease. Matter cannot move without energy to move it. So the quality of living is an element entirely within the knowledge and province of innate intelligence resident within us. Matter moves at a normal rate of speed when man is well. When it does, matter lives and is healthy. Reduce the speed by reducing the quality of energy that moves it, and you reduce the quantity and quality of production of its product and its byproducts. And it is as simple as that. Life or living matter or matter action at normal rate of speed is because of a continuity flow of energy through a continuity of matter. Break the continuity of matter or the continuity of energy and you break the continuity of action with its consequent reduction in product and byproducts. Cut a nerve in two by intention or through an accident. Somewhere between the brain and the end of that nerve in the body and you have broken the continuity of the medium which carried the continuity of energy flow. If the nerve is in natural continuity as it was intended to be in human beings between brain and the end of that nerve in the body, then the continuity of energy flow is normal and the individual will be well unless it's broken. The constant which comprises the scientific fundamental upon which chiropractic rests is an accident of some kind, one of many kinds, introduces the external concussion of force, which when it meets resistance with the body it contacts, produces a concussion of forces, one invasionary, the other resisting, which because of the clash and concussion of forces
betwixt and between, being the vertebral column, subluxates a vertebra of the spinal column, which in turn produces an occlusion and a pressure and an interference to flow and creates dis-ease. The chiropractic practice is to locate the exact vertebral subluxation and ascertain its precise abnormal position, then by hand only, efficiently give it an adjustment to correct its malposition, which opens the occlusion, releases the pressure, restores the transmission, and given time, produces health. And it is as simple as that. All energy for all the body is resident in all the brain. Each part of the brain produces all the energy for that part of the body. Cut off or reduce that normal quantity of brain energy from going to some part of the body and it reduces its tissue speed, reducing its working product or byproducts and the individual becomes sick and if entirely cut off, would be dead. The brain is the life source. The spinal nerves and spinal cord merely convey or transmit that life force to all parts of the body. The human brain is a human dynamo. The human body is a series of human motors. The human nervous system is a series of transmitters of human energy, both efferent and afferent, completing circuits, generating, conveying, and acting human electricity. Each nerve circuit, brain to body and body back to brain, is independent in brain production, nerve transmission, and tissue cell speed of action. Yet, simultaneously, dependent from all others, as all others are dependent upon it. But this human innate mind is a great intellectual director, regulator, or controller of human energy. For mind is a thought force. If the brain generates the thought force, the nerves convey thought energy, the body expresses that mental function, the body will be healthy in all parts. If the normal quantity of mental impulses get through from brain to all parts of the body. So you see how easy and simple the whole problem is. A vertebral subluxation can be aptly compared to a dam. The vertebral subluxation squeezes the opening through which nerves pass. The reduced size of this opening produces a pinching or pressure upon nerves. Build a dam across a river and you produce a similar condition. The dam backs up water behind the dam. This keeps water from going through and getting below the dam. The subluxation acts as a dam on the nerves or spinal cord. This stops the blow forward and backs it up behind it. This damning back of human nerve force produces a stuffy, full, congested feeling behind the obstruction in the head. It also keeps nerve force current from flowing forward below the obstruction, starving the territory below, which would be otherwise fed by that nerve force flow. When a dam gate is opened, the water is permitted to flow through, and when an adjustment is given to the vertebral subluxation, the nerve force flow is permitted to flow freely to the places above or the places below. And this receive, relieves the congestion above and feeds the starved area below the dam. And health is thus reestablished. Getting sick people well is as simple as that. Now, chiropractic having a right formula 
But getting sick people well does get sick people well. If chiropractic was wrong, it would fail to get sick people well. Chiropractic being right, it is applicable in 100% of cases. If it was wrong, it would apply in no case. The chiropractic principle and practice being fundamentally sound, then it is right all the way. Vital and fundamental principles have a definite fixed approach and application which are not subject to the caprices and idiosyncrasies of men. If they were, chaos in all fundamentals would exist. In this category are found all sciences. It is that stability which makes it a science. Two times two makes four. Not sometimes, but always. Universally so. This regulatory factor is not a matter of individual opinion in which one may make it six and another make it eight. It is always four. No matter who, why, where, or how. It is this fixed rule of mathematics which makes it a science. Chemistry and astronomy are two more having fixed principles and practices. It is that ability to agree on fundamentals that makes scientists. It is that inability to agree on fundamentals that draws the sharp line between scientists and theorists, realists and sophists. If everyone who called himself a mathematician, a chemist, or astronomer had personal reasons for rules of his own, there could and would be no scientific value to any common fundamental on which they could or would agree. Sciences are based on fixed formulae. The only reason they are is because they work. Chiropractic has a scientific fixed success formula that works when it's worked. I recall some years ago, we were coming from the South Pacific Islands. We stopped at the Tin Can Island of Nianfu because that was the one place in the world where there was a, an eclipse of the sun that day. And all the astronomers of the world had gathered in Nianfu to photograph that eclipse of the sun. Coming home on the boat were many astronomers. And I said to the astronomer from the Department of Astronomy of the University of West Virginia, one night we were sitting out on the deck, I said, Professor, tell me, how near did your various astronomers that was gathered from all the world, Siberia, Russia, Norway, Sweden, uh, Denmark, Belgium, France, Germany, South Africa, New Zealand, Australia, Japan, China. How near did you agree as to when that eclipse would begin and when it would end? He said, we all agreed to the second, both coming and going, with the exception of one man. Well, I said, how much was he off? He was off one half a second. That's what makes astronomy a science. It is his ability to lay aside the differences of views, agree on fundamentals, hold the differences of opinions on everything else, which enables scientists to find factual data and then agree. Somewhere between the law of facts of living beings, wandering through the maze of the failures of the practice of medicine, there is a law to life, to which and through which all the so-called phenomena of life and death, sickness and health apply. There is a health success formula that works somewhere. Time, place, and individual opinions do not change the fact. 
They only mislead one in searching for the right formula. When that chiropractic success formula is used, medical mysteries disappear and common sense will be understood. Instead of the very fertile sick field being under intensive health cultivation, producing bumper crops of healthy people, there exists a medical jungle of undergrowth of weeds, impenetrable and impassable, with many sowing wild weeds to make it worse. Each science has its law, from which no man who professes to be an advocate and a follower can escape. His beginning, his boundaries, his circumscribed path are defined and confined by it. No man can work against law and expect law to work with him. That is the law of law. Where is the medical man who, with all his medical education, could artificially make and direct the function of one tissue cell? Yet the innate intelligence, living, directing, and regulating all the tissue cells and functions in the mother, builds entire baby bodies. That is the wisdom the chiropractor prefers to permit to get sick people well. This reasoning is equally true in man. His conception, gestation, development, birth, life, death, health, sickness, and restoration back to health. It was and is governed by law. It has been governed by law for millions of years in millions of bodies. It is governed by law now in millions of people. To know that law and to work with that law is to know how to get sick people well. That law is simple in principle and practice. As two times two makes four, not sometimes, but always. A chiropractor knows that law and works with it. That's why it gets sick people get well. And it is as simple as that. Chiropractic has discovered and developed knowledge of that law that has always existed and fills the great void for that law in the application to man and his sickness. Chiropractic destroys nothing, replaces nothing, substitutes nothing, neither is it iconoclastic against any present-day satisfactory order of things in conformity with that law. Chiropractic is an original and new principle in practice, as compared with all others in its field of effort, and was born of a necessity to make possible a long sought for hitherto impossibility. The automobile did not replace the horse, even though both were transportation methods. The electric light did not substitute kerosene, even though both sought light. Neither does chiropractic substitute medicine, though both desire health to the sick. Each in its turn and place incorporated a new principle, a new practice, and a new result. Chiropractic has fundamental postulates of science, has constants for scientific, logical procedure, possesses essential processes to base its science on. Therefore, it meets the exacting demands of proving itself in terms of science. Chiropractic fundamentally does get sick people well because it has well-defined, well-identified scientific principles step by step in sequence from health to dis-ease and from dis-ease back to health. Hence, chiropractic locates and corrects a true specific of cause and cure of dis-ease. Chiropractic, like all sciences, always works and does attain the same ends of any science when scientists work with it, apply the correct rules 
which established it as a science. Chiropractic is natural, created before man, not by man. Chiropractic is as powerful as any other power contained within and liberated by law or by any other natural power or anything natural. It has nothing artificial in its makeup. It is reason and logic within every bound of logic and reason. In the abstract, it is broad enough to cover the entire human race and limited enough to apply to one person. Its very appeal to human understanding lies in its dynamic simplicity. Medicine to the average individual is a mysterious principle in practice. It too can be reduced to a simple formula. Weaving through the multiplicity of diagnostic names and prescriptions, it boils down to two diseases. Too rapid action for one type, too slow action for the other. And then, that's why you find so many hyper and hypo prefixes to their names, for which it has two kinds of drug treatments, to inhibit the stimulation, to stimulate the inhibition. In other words, hypo the hyper and hyper the hypo. Two general kinds of drugs to treat two general kinds of diseases. A good example that comes to comes readily is the heart and its action. If it beats approximately 72 times a minute, we have normal pumping action and the heart health exists. If it beats 85 times a minute, it is now pumping too fast and the heart dis-ease, diagnosed as tachycardia, exists. For this, the physician would give some drug which would inhibit the rapid action. What kind of drug or how much to give might be difficult for him. If it beats 60 times a minute, it is now pumping too slowly. And an opposite type of heart disease, diagnosed as bradycardia, exists. For this, the physician would give some drug which would stimulate the slowed action. What kind of drug or how much to give still might be difficult for him to decide. So he tries this or that until he thinks he knows. The chiropractor does not work with that principle. He adjusts and permits a restoration of the normal quantity of an internal innate flow of force, which is inherently and intellectually resident within the body, which alone knows the proper quantity to establish the proper quality of function necessary to establish health, which is internally automatic within us, which calls for no empiric or arbitrary opinion of ours. And it is as simple as that. Physicians have a medical concept that the body lives within itself when it's healthy. But when sick, it needs some external agency to give it health. So they prescribe chemicals, antis, and other neutralizing agencies under stimulative or inhibitive or neutralizing processes to make it well. They work on the principle of asserting they know what the unbalance is then by stimulation or inhibition, force it either up or down, arbitrarily and empirically, to a standard which they think they know. If it goes too high, they bring it down. If it goes too low, they force it up. The chiropractor does not know that normal power. Only the resident intelligent force within us does know so, we leave all of that to it.
It is as simple as that. When drugs are given, it is with the assumption that the physician knows what is wrong, his diagnosis is infallible, the physician knows the exact failure chemical formula, therefore knows the exact correct chemical formula to give. If it is stimulated condition, he knows exactly how much of an inhibitive to give to balance. If it's an inhibited condition, he knows exactly how much of a stimulative to give to balance. He knows what the balance is, or should be, without possibility of error. When he gives a drug by way of the stomach, the stomach knows just where the physician wants it to send it, and sends it there without deviation or deflection. For instance, if it were rheumatism in the right big toe, the stomach would not send it to the left big toe, the chiropractor presumes no such understanding. He adjusts at the location of the interference. This is all he can do. The brain generates the right quantity of force in health and sickness. The nerves now convey that right quantity of thought force to their periphery. Wherever those nerves go, where the dis-ease is, to the place or places where it should go. When the normal quantity arrives, it knows exactly what to do and how to do it to produce the right quantity and quality of life. All the things I don't know, it does. That is intellectually, internally controlled and is at all times beyond my reach in either sickness, health, life, or death. And I couldn't control it if I wanted to. And I couldn't control it no matter how much education I did or did not have. You do not control the quantity of electricity when you turn on the button, or tell the electricity where to go, or tell the electricity when to go, Neither do you stimulate or inhibit the wires or globe or their excess or minus quantities. It goes when you turn on the button. When it arrives, it gives light. Some men doubt and even deny the existence of a vital life force. And then they run into trouble. So you see how simple it is. Now, people have been taught that germs cause disease. That isn't true. You can vaccinate an entire community and make them sick to keep one person that is sick from getting well. Simple, isn't it? The cause of disease is not a communistic thing. And I don't mean that in the political sense. This idea that the community makes a person sick, or we've got to do something to the community to get the one sick person well, is wrong. The cause of disease is not in the community. The cure of disease is not in the community. The cause is individualistic, and the cure is individualistic within the individual. So you see how simple it is? After all, no government can long survive when the individual and his responsibility are ignored and all his responsibility shed upon the community. No government arrives anywhere until the individual has been taught to assume his responsibility, after which the community action is automatic, wherein the many are made up out of the one. All experience that survives in the cause and cure of disease is based upon a knowledge that the cause and cure of disease is within the individual. And this is not a responsibility that he can shed upon his neighbor and blame him for it. When any health method ignores the individual in its equation and casts that blame upon the community, he professes his ignorance of the cause and cure of disease as it exists in the individual. 
and thus proves his incompetence to be of service to an individual, except as he tries to reach him through community welfare. The cause of smallpox is in the individual, not the community. The cure of smallpox lies in the individual, not in wholesale vaccination of the community. Physicians admit that some people are immune, others are fertile culture grounds. Some resist better than others. Those who resist are stronger and are more able to cast off. And you ask any physician, why of a thousand people, five are down with smallpox? And you say that 995 are able to resist the invasion. What makes resistance? It's that internal power that flows from within that builds up the resistance to the invasion of anything. Then why blame the community and vaccinate them all? An individual with a subluxation will resist less and one without will resist more. Resistance from within is fundamental. With it we resist and without it we invite invasion. All schools of health are agreed upon this principle as sound. Germs exist. We don't deny their presence. We deny them as a cause of disease. I think it's safe to say that if throat swabs were made of everybody in this room tonight, you'd find that the most of you have tuberculotic germs, you have typhoid germs, you have malarial germs, you have smallpox germs, and you have several kinds of germs in your body right now. But are you sick? No, because your body can resist them. Germs are scavengers. They help to keep the alleyways of the sick body clean. They eat it up, the same as we send rats out to eat our garbage. The rats don't cause the garbage to be there. It's the balance of nature in keeping up the balance between scavenger matter and scavengers. You see, when the chiropractor affirms this principle of the necessity of internal resistance in the individual and then practices that by making the internal resistance naturally possible in the individual, flowing from within, he confirms his consistency in principle and practice. I don't, I recall, as I told you the other day on this great surgeon who came, I don't think we ever convinced him in any way, but look what it did to his wife. Now as a practical observer, Watching the efforts of medical men, this brought, brings back to my mind, just flashes through. Some years ago, I was to lecture in Portland, Oregon. And I had been reading several medical books, and it talked all about the phenomena of medicine, which called to my mind that some years before that I had been down in Kentucky. And I saw a great big fat Negro sitting on a split rail fence. And I said, Sam, it seems to me that with this fertile soil you have here, you want to raise a good crop. He said, yeah. And I said, it seems to me with this sun beating down, you ought to raise a fine crop. Yep. Well, it seems to me if you had a little rain, you could wear, build some fine crops here. Yep. I said, it seems to me that with a little energy, you could do a lot of things here. And he said, yep. Well, I said, what are you waiting for? He said, I'm just waiting for that little energy. <laughs> so it, some years ago, as I say, I was reading some books on this phenomena thing, the phenomena of medicine, the phenomena of this. And incidentally, there isn't a doctor, a physician, or surgeon alive that can tell you in advance the effect of any one drug on any one person. There is no specific in medicine. Why? Because the imponderables of the human individual makes the 
prescribing of a drug and imponderable in its result. Yet the innate possesses no imponderabilities. The innate is a fixed law that always works. I was making this trip out to Portland. I was reading medical books about this phenomenal thing. And I was discouraged. So I went out on the highway and I walked down the road. And I saw a horseshoe. I stooped down and picked it up. And I said, gee, now I'm going to get good luck. Found a horseshoe. Went along a little further. I found another horseshoe. And I said, now I'm going to get double good luck. Went along a little further. I saw another horseshoe. I picked it up and I said, now triple good luck's coming my way. I turned around and started towards town and I come across a whole pile of horseshoes. Then I realized it was a question of junk. And I think the same thing is true with physicians. You get one physician, one diagnosis. You get two physicians, two diagnoses, two horseshoes. You get third physician in a conference, and then you've got three horseshoes. By the time you get four of them, you've got junk for the undertaker. <laughs> the medical profession seek aim and to destroy what they think are human life destroyers. They're supposed to lurk like murderers in every dark crevice and crack and corner in your body. In the air, the wood, the water, the food, even inside the man. And so they fluoridate the water to kill the germs to keep you well. When health comes from within. That's why we have well water here. Every, everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> are multitudinous microbes, some so small that even an electron microscope magnifying a hundred thousand times can't find them. These natural products, as natural as man himself, conceived and created by innate, designed by innate, to fill all natural functions, are exhibited by man alone as horrible examples of mistakes of in it. I wonder how those people figure out that God actually made the world. Now you see, he made all these devils to decimate man. And yet he's been doing a pretty good job of it for millions of years. I don't see how they can confuse the two ideas. I couldn't. And I don't see how they can in this endless struggle. Now the ordinary sick person starts out as an acute case. Yesterday he had an accident. And today he's got a little fever. Mother gets a little anxious and worries, and so she calls the doctor. The doctor said, I don't know what to call this yet because I'll have to wait until it develops. So he hangs around for four or five days and the temperature keeps going up, gets up to 102.6. He said, I don't know quite yet. We'll wait and see if there's a breaking out. Then it breaks out and now he said, we have an eruptive fever. We uh, think that it may be varicose, it might be scarlet fever, it might be measles. We'll wait a few days. Meanwhile, you just give the child this and this and this. And eventually, someday, the case goes from the acute stage into the chronic stage. Maybe they're deaf. Maybe they're crippled. Maybe they're this, that, and the other thing. I recall, I think I told the pre lyceum class last year that at one time we had quite a number of polio cases in our student clinic. And they helped officer of the city of Davenport came up and he said, now, B.J., you've got to report all these because we've passed an ordinance that you've got to report these cases so we can quarantine them. 
And I said, John, tell me, John Mellon was his name. I said, John, tell me, what are the symptoms of the pathologies of polio? Well, he said, we don't know. That's why we're quarantining him so we can find out. <laughs> and I said, all right, John, when you know what polio is and can come and tell me, then I'll know what polio is, then I'll know what to report to you so that you can quarantine him. And that was the end of that. They never quarantined any of our cases because I didn't know what to report to them for quarantine. A little common sense knocks down a lot of scientific nonsense. And I knocked it in the cocked hat. That was that. You know what a specialist is? He's a man who knows more and more about less and less. He spends a lifetime on the eye, the ear, the nose, the throat, the heart, the stomach, or what have you. And then what? He's forgotten that the eye, the ear, the nose, the throat, the heart, or the stomach is a part of the rest of the body. So he becomes a specialist on that one thing. After all, Innate is on top of all parts of that body and knows that no one part can live unto itself. They've got to coordinate themselves and innate knows how to coordinate them. So you see, after all, it's just as simple as that. Now the chiropractor changes this whole picture. Instead of sickness and recovered health being a highly specialized and complex subject, which only a few university graduates understand only a mere small part of, it now becomes a simple subject, in fact so simple that any man on the street can have it explained and understand, knows what to do, where to go, to get well. It is so simple that the students of this school can't understand it. Eighty percent of our time is spent to telling those students why germs don't cause disease. And twenty percent trying to pump something in about a vertebral subluxation and an interference to innate. Eighty percent backing up what his grandmother and great-grandmother and great-great-grandmother or grandfather has been pumping into him for centuries. And we've only got four little insignificant years to unbreed the breedings of centuries. I can't see why he can't see the obvious, but they rarely do. You see, the very successful objectives denies the things, and yet he keeps pumping it back to us all the time. I've had it right here in last week's work. I'll have it in some of my questions tomorrow. I'll bet you a dollar against every person in this house that tomorrow I get some damn fool questions about what I've been talking about all week. <laughs> but just remember that the transition from the old order of things to the new order of things is a question of growth. And growth is a question of time. I was talking to a certain chiropractor who was in the tent tonight, and that person asked me a certain question. Now that person is a very fine chiropractor. And yet, there was one phase of this whole subject that wasn't known to that chiropractor until last week. And the talk that I gave Sunday morning, that person came to me and said, B.J., now I have grown one step further. You see, it takes time, and time is the great factor. The people didn't buy Henry Ford's car, the first one he produced. They laughed at it and scoffed at it. 
They said, have a team hitched up the livery stable and get ready because he may call for you. How do I know? I had the first gasoline automobile west of the Mississippi. And I know once in a while we had to call on a team, too. <laughs> they wasn't perfected yet. But how people used to lack, I mean, I was so afraid that the people wouldn't know who owned the car that I put my name on the side, on both sides of it. <laughs> that was the day of the horseless carriage. And I know when the farmers came to town with their eggs and chickens, once in a while a team would run away. You'd see chickens all over the streets and eggs spilled all over the streets and broken. And they sued me for damages. My defense was if you had a good harness on the horses, you'd have held them so they wouldn't have run away. And I always got out of it. <laughs> so I know what it means to be a pioneer. I recall when we was first starting it with radio, some 36 years ago with WOC, I went to the banker. I said, Mr. Banker, what do you think about this radio thing? Looked at me and said, B.J., it's a plaything. It's a plaything for kids. The fool is money is soon part. Don't waste any money on it. Then I went to the editor of a newspaper, put the same question to him. He said, B.J., a fool is money is soon part. This kid's plaything. Don't waste any money on it. Then about five years ago, I was offered $200,000 for WHO. I went down to the banker. I said, what do you think? Here's a letter from the National Broadcasting Company offering me $200,000 for WHO. And he said, B.J., by all means, take it. That's $200,000 in the bank. Take it. <laughs> Less than one year later, I had a, another letter from the National Broadcasting Company asking me to sell at the beginning price of two million. The beginning price, from that up, to whatever we'd ask for. It. I took that letter down to him. <laughs> he put his hands up, sort of shading and hiding his nose, and he said, well, we can all make mistakes. I know what it means to be a pioneer, and I know how people laugh at us. But somehow it didn't stop me. Thirty-six years ago, I laid down this principle. This is a community station owned by the community for community service. That has been always our watchword in the use of that station. And we've never missed fire with it. At the same time, 36 years ago I said, the day will come when we will bring the world to your ears. We will bring the world to your eyes and we'll bring it in color. 36 years ago. We've been bringing it to the ears for 36 years. We're now bringing it to the eyes the last five years with WOC. And now we're broadcasting color. So after all, where was the vision? It takes guts, intestinal fortitude, to have a vision and stand by it until it comes through. We sent $440,000 in WOC before we were able to get our first commercial dollar back from it. But oh boy, we've got it back since. The chiropractic principle is simple. The practice is simple. The results for the sick are simple. Providing a success formula is correctly and efficiently followed. You know something? I'm an ignoramus. I suddenly was quituated from the high school the first half of the first year. 
Will Logie that run a chain of drug stores and Will Hickey that runs a chain of cigar stores and myself, we took some live rats to school in cigar boxes. In the study room where there was about 400 students, about half of them girls. And we turned them loose, the rats. And the girls jumped up on the desk and pulled their skirts out. Well, that's why we did it. The winds all fired, expelled. I never went back. So I'm an ignorant man. What do I know about chemistry? All I know is H2O means water, and I don't know that. I just think that's so. Maybe it is, maybe it ain't. What do I know about bacteriology and microscopy? Nothing. What do I know about a lot of this junk that we're compelled to teach here? in order to go around and prove to the world that we're highbrows. I don't know those things, and yet you super intelligent people come here and listen to an ignoramus talk. All I know is there's a subluxation that makes sick people well, and I know how to correct it. That's all I need to know. From then on, everything else that we want done or hope to have done, either from the patient's point of view or ours, is up to innate, and that's in the individual and not in me. I recall some years ago, I went to Dealington, West Virginia, opened an office upstairs in the Oddfellows Hall. All I had, all I had, was a suitcase adjusting table. I had nothing else. But within my mind, I was a disciple of my father. My father said, the cause of all disease lies in the backbone. And being a good St. John or St. Peter, I believed him, and I went out on the highways and the byways and began punching backbones, ignorant little kid of 18, and I was getting sick people well. Why did I succeed? I was making $200 a day, kid 18, ignorant. All I had and was around a around head, head was an idea. and hands. And that and idea table. was rattling around in that head was an idea. I sat at his feet night after and night. That idea I was listened to him say by it my works. father as I sat at his feet night after night. And I went out and listened to him say it works. And I've never gotten away from that idea and one minute, one that that thought idea. from that day to this and very hour. And I've never gotten away from that idea one minute, one thought from that day to this very hour. I was talking to some great educator the other day. He was lauding my achievements. I was talking to some great educator and the I other day. I took it all modestly. He was lauding but my achievements. But at the same time, I was thinking what a fool he was. And I took it all modestly. But at the and same said, time, BJ, I was thinking what a fool he was. one thing I admire you for, and I said, what's that? Your consistency. And he said, BJ, there was one thing I admire you for, and I said, what's that? The consistency, consistency and down through the years. years. The consistency, all, insistency, when you've got that inner deep conviction that you know it works. All, when you've got that when inner you know deep conviction it works. that you know there's it works. There's nothing to take it away from you. When you know it works. I recall when I there's was down in Florida last take it away winter, from you. Herb Hender came down and I saw recall me. Spent when I was down in Florida last winter, Herb Hender came down and saw me. Spent a few days a week or two with me. Professional talk. And we was talking Herb about night this question. Crony's He said, B.J., have you ever known anybody? Talk. Herb asked this question. Where we got the big idea? He said, B.J., have you that ever has known ever anybody? Forsaken it or denied where it? Where we got the big idea? That has I ever forsaken it There's or denied Jane it? Gass. There's Tina Martin. And I got to thinking. There's Dr. There's Mary Jane Gass. Gass. I 
There's Which Tina Mays. There's a flash to my mind. There's Dr. Mays. I should know Dr. her. That. I, I've Rick never known Mace one that got the idea. Mind. I should know that her. Ever forsook it. I've never known denied. one that got the idea. And that is true. That ever forsook it. It's only the people denied. that don't get the bigness of the simplicity of this simple principle. It's only the people that don't get the That's bigness of the simplicity of this simple principle in practice. I've often think of thought since I was denied over in the Palestine, the Holy Land. I've often think, a thought, since I Here was, was a simple over man. Over in the Palestine, the Holy Land. Bringing forth a tremendous peace. Here was a simple man. The fatherhood of God bringing and the forth brotherhood a of man. tremendous peace. That's what it amounds to when you boil it down the to a The fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man. He was going around That's preaching. what it amounts to when you boil it down to a The chest. fatherhood of God. And he and was going around of preaching. Man. And he didn't the make any discrimination God. between and the white man, and black man, man yellow and man, he didn't or make any discrimination Jew between or Gentile, white man, and black man, Mohammed man, man, or red man, Jew or the Gentile. The principle he laid down was big enough for all Mohammed the world, or all Buddhist. time to come. The principle he laid down was big enough for and all the world, world for all time uh, to come. Disciples? Simple little fishermen. And then where did he pick up his uh, disciples? Simple men. Simple little fishermen. He went around preaching that gospel. Simple men. And he wasn't understood by very many people. He went around people. preaching that gospel. But time, time, and he time wasn't has understood by very many the people. Understanding. But time, oh, time, time principle. has grown. The strength the understanding. of the Christian principle oh, that is in its simplicity. Principle. The strength. Now, the Christian principle is in its simplicity. If we just get that principle over. Now, Not in its context. Let me see if I can give you an if idea. If we just get that principle over. I'm now, going to take a trip let into a curve. Let me see if I can give you an idea. I'm the going to take a trip into, into a chiropractor's office. First thing he does, the take the patient comes in that's sick. And then uh, let me take your pulse. First thing he does, let me take do this, that, and the other thing. Give me some sputum. And then uh, let me take I your pulse. I want to take beat, some of the ear wax out of your and the other thing. Give me some sputum. And he goes through a long I want to take some of the ear wax out of your ears. And then eventually and he goes through he a long rigmarole. And then he says to the person, and then eventually he now diagnosed. I can't do anything for you for uh, and then he says at least to the person, three weeks. Now I can't I'll do anything to look for up you in the books for, uh, and see what at I least am two or three to do for you and what I am to I'll give you. I'll have to look up in the books and any see complexes what I am to do for you perfect. and what I am to give you. He and said, I'll have to look up and see what my anatomy perfect. says about this muscle and that muscle. And he said, I'll have to look up and see what my anatomy says about this muscle and that muscle. I'll have to see whether this organ is involved and that organ is involved. I'll have to see whether this organ is involved and that organ is involved. I'll have to see whether it's this or that one. This will take me at least three weeks to go back over the armamentarium that will take me at least three weeks to go back over the armamentarium that was pumped into me in the chiropractic school. And so he exhibits a marvelous intellectuality weeks. of complexity. And so he exhibits now, a marvelous he? intellectuality no. of complexity. If all of you did that, you wouldn't have any now, business. does he? On the reverse, here's no. what you do, and you know you If all of you did that, you wouldn't have any business. business. On the reverse, here's what you do, A and you know you do it. Doggone you. Something's wrong. You don't know what a it is. You don't know in. where it is. You don't care where it is or what it is. Something's wrong. You don't but know you do what know. it is. You don't know There's where it is. You don't like care where it is or what it is. You take him in, you get a spinal cord. But you do know. There's a very You want to know where the interference is. You use a neurotic You take him in, you get a spinal cord. Chirometer. You want to know where the interference is. You use a neurotic lobner, neurotic calligraph. Then you say, lay down here. Biff bang. You find where the interference is. Then you say, lay down here. The patient gets back. Is that all? That's all that I can do. The patient gets up. Will do Is all that the rest. all? That's all that I can now do. Now what about all it your bacteriology and your chemistry and all this other junk? Now what about you all your it? bacteriology you know you and your chemistry and, I and know all you this don't. other junk? You're not junk. kidding me one minute. You use it? You know you don't. And I, I know, know you don't. You're not kidding me one you minute. pass your basic science board and the moment I you know pass that the moment you stage pass board, your basic out in the alley board, with the junk, and the moment you pass your chiropractic state board, out in the alley with the junk. This is the end of this lecture. This is the end of this lecture.